So there's Nice, there's the Mediterranean, and the other side of the dip is Egypt. And uh, yes, I've been walk I've been uh, yesterday. I walked from this little village there, and I've been I've been searching since last night. Can't find it. So, well, there I am, finally. I do it again with the uh, with the wind noise regulator. So here is the the pyramid of uh, La Rata Pinata. Ra is the the pharaonic sun king. When I was here 21 years ago, that was in 90, 1992, it was still intact on top. But people had taken the stones, and I suppose the pharaohs they wanted to take away the uh, the proofs. There used to be a swastika on it, but in, in the 1920s somebody took it away. Um, here in this, so here we can see the Alps. There, people go skiing there from Nizza or Nice. Uh, yesterday I walked from this village here, Falicon. That's where you have to look for Falicon. It's about eight kilometers north of Nice, and there's Nice. There you see. So I've been hitchhiking for five days. I couldn't find it in the night, and uh, walking a lot. So here I am, and there's the Mediterranean. Of course, on the other side of the dip is Egypt. You see, but why putting it uh, on top of a mountain here? Why not at the uh, the border where everybody can see it? Well, it's probably on a first of all, it's probably on a ley line, and it's on the mountain here. It's called Le Mont Chauve, the Bald Mountain, as you can see. <laughs> Um, where uh, it, it, it has a better view from a satellite, you know. I mean, we have to start thinking now, and a lot of people do, that spaceships do exist. I mean, it's possible now, you see. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. So, before the pharaohs founded Switzerland, they, were, they landed here in France, in Nice, there's no doubt. And they're all the time looking at these snow white mountains and wondering what's there. Well, now they know what's there. But why did they build it here on a hill? I mean, um, it came out, I think, uh, just after the Middle Ages because there was a big bushfire. And then they found it here, this thing here. Uh, why here on a hill? I mean, here you can perfectly see it uh, from, a, uh, from a satellite view. I mean, we can imagine nowadays that spaceships exist. So, unfortunately, they're trying to destroy bit by bit this pyramid. I, 20 years ago, it was still intact on top here. Uh, they want to take away the proofs, you see. So this is pharaonic, at least 4,000 years old, with a view at the motherland. The pyramid of La Rata Piñata. We have view from the side. Pyramid. And apparently there's people passing by, he's doing some weird stuff here. Some old pharaonic magic, or I don't know what. So now let's have a look at the inside. It goes all the way deep inside the pyramid here. You see? I hope we're not going to fall in here. Put the torch on. Oh, you don't see anything here. It goes all the way deep inside in the pyramid. Hello? Any Egyptians down there? And here's the swimming pool for the new pharaohs. There it is.
So who needs any more proof that the pharaohs are here, that they've always been here, that they're ruling us and that they founded Switzerland? I don't think you need any more proofs, do you? So the pyramid actually came out because uh, just after the Middle Ages somewhere there was a big bushfire here in the forest here and then it, burn, it all burned out and then the pyramid came, uh, came out. So uh, that's how they discovered it. And still on, uh, in 1920, there was a swastika on it, a pharaonic swastika. As I've proved that the swastika is of pharaonic, uh, is pharaonic in fact. So, so, as we can see, it's a real pyramid, eh? Yeah. going very deep down. There's a very big pyramid in the mountain under the earth. You see? I mean, of course they didn't put the blocks here. Just like a, a millimeter over the sand, over the earth here. It's going inside here. So there is the obelisk, La Rata Piñata, and it f in, in fact that means the bat, <laughs> Batman, you know, and in the Niswa language. And there's a little village where you have to go up, it's called Légienne. There were people who said it, was, it had to do with the giant people in, uh, in India. But they call it uh, Jaina in the uh, Niswa language, which means the uh, where they keep the uh, the goats. There it is, one more time from another angle. Now this is the kind of the road or a path which is leading to the pyramid, and I just got lost in Le Maquis just before I didn't get out for hours. I don't know, I got deeper into it and deeper. I couldn't understand how it could be so stupid. I suppose this is the wrong one. Yeah, it's the wrong one, it's like the other one. That's very hard. So this is the way back. I was at the pyramid and uh, I'm trying to get back, but oh God, you know. damn it. I'm a bit worried because of my backpack, you know, my tent. <sighs> and every time I have to crawl with 20 or 30 kilos of my, on my back. Oh, let's see what this gets stuck in up there. Mm. Oh man, there's a lot of thorns here. Full of thorns. Nothing lost. So you want to see pyramids? I'll be ready. Uh, like a bloody jungle here. Oh, no, it's getting better finally. I remember this here. Okay, I made it. Oh man. There it is, the biggest pyramid of Europe. So here in Holland, 
is the biggest pyramid of Europe. It's 36 meters high. It has an obelisk on it. It was made by the pharaohs or their descendants for Napoleon and by the general Mormont. There were 18,000 men here. It's next to Utrecht in the middle of the Netherlands. And when Napoleon was in the pyramid in Egypt, he came out, he was completely pale and white and his soldiers asked him, well, sir, what happened? And he said, well, I don't want to tell you because you're not going to understand. He's a pharaoh. He was a pharaoh and something happened there. So here is the, the forest here all around. And uh, yeah, it's an obelisk. It's a pyramid with an obelisk on it. They are here, all right. Oh, yeah. So this thing was built in 1804 by Napoleon and for Napoleon, who felt himself as a pharaoh. Why else? They are here. What more proof do you want? Pyramid and an obelisk. Do you need any more proof? Well, watch the Pharaoh show. They're here and they're ruling. So here we're not far away at all of the Bilderberg Hotel where the Bilderbergs with this Prince SS, Prince Bernard, uh, started. So this is the biggest pyramid of Europe, it says. Well, I don't understand everything, but... Uh, it's like two more. And they built it in 1804, it's 36 meters high. Uh, well, Napoleon, he loved pyramids, eh? The pharaohs. Well, I don't understand everything, but what they're saying. There it is, the pyramid with the obelisk on it. The Pharaoh. What's that? So between the Hotel Bilderberg and the Pyramid is only 8 kilometers. Well, you think that's a coincidence? No, it's a straight line. There's some very dark energies. The name Bilderberg is not even Dutch. The word Bilder is German and it means the pictures uh, or paintings. A uh, burg, it means a mountain. In this country it's all flat, there are no mountains. And the name was chosen by the SS Prince, Prince Bernard. Look, the lions, the world domination, this, this funny wizard here. And uh, yeah, so where are mountains of pictures? In Auschwitz, mountains of shoes. Mountains of glasses, mountains of hair, and mountains of pictures of all these people murdered and that their identities being completely erased for eternity. Well, maybe not. So this, this here is the actual Bilderberg Hotel. I'm not, I don't want to film inside, I'll tell you that. It doesn't look very... Yeah, well... So, oh, wow, look at it, a Swiss cross. Whoa, two times. Oh man, oh man. Look at this. 
They are here, Octagon. The Swiss, the Schweizer, Les Suisses, Le Templi, Octagon, Bilderberg. Look, it's all here. Here's Octagon at the Bilderberg Hotel. Uh, here's uh, Fleur de Lis. Look at that. This? I don't know. Look at it here. Yeah. The Builder book, Prince of Darkness, Burn Hard, created the 322 or 322 Fighter Squadron in England in 1943. Just as the Skull and Bones 322 Lodge of the Freemasons. His name, Bern Hard, is related to the capital of Octagon, Switzerland. Bern, meaning Bern is hard, as in Simon of the Strong Mountains, and it's therefore no wonder he studied in Switzerland, doing law at Lausanne University. Well, these persons always do law somehow. Then the 322 Prince of Darkness started to work for I.G. Farben who produced Zyklon B for the extermination camps as Auschwitz. So he was very much related to the Nazi Templars of Octagon, Switzerland, who financed the whole thing. His pharaonic royal name of the Per A is Tour Lippe Biesterfeld, meaning to belong to the lips of the field of the beasts. So no wonder the 322 squadron says, don't talk, but do, related to the lips of the royal name. These people don't talk, just as the Swiss don't talk. From the other side, the L'autre Côté, from the other side here. Oi, 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 oi. So this is where I was heading to now. The weather is very awful here. It's windy, it's snowing all the time. Uh, this is called Montségur. This is where the, uh, the last of the Qatar, they, uh, they hid here. So even up here, away from everybody, here, completely in the mountains, they still got them. Simon de Montfort, so Simon of the Strong Mountains. Well, that's Switzerland, Octagon, the Nazi Templars. And they did the same thing with the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, like uh, the Swiss Nazi Templars gave the orders, like uh, financing Hitler, Jonestown, uh, Waco. It's still the same. And um, Octagon is the empire of evil. And a long time before, there was uh, the, uh, uh, from the Siegfried uh, saga, uh, Siegfried or Mont Ségur, Ségur as they call him here in France, he came from uh, the Low Countries in Alphen on the Rhine and he came all the way down here to uh, slay the dragon. So in 1244, and that was after the death of uh, Simon de Montfort, who died uh, 1218. Uh, but he had his man continue the work. So 1244, they burned the last of the Cathar. Women, children, everybody. So this far away, they won't let you alone, even this far away. So if you want to build a society, especially if it's religious, like Waco, Jonestown, um, Jehovah's Witnesses in the concentration camps, well, you, you're going to end up the hard way. And Octagon, Switzerland, the empire of evil, always has its fingers in it somewhere. 
concentration camps, Hitler, uh, Simon de Montfort of the Strong Mountains, which is Switzerland. They always have their fingers in it. So all the way up there I slept once 20 years ago in 1992-93. But there were, then there were, I didn't have a camera and there was no YouTube. Montségur, 200 women, men and children, they just burned them. And the Swiss, it was the Swiss Inquisition, it was a Swiss book. Montségur. Château de Arc. Rennes le Château, there it is. Well, There's nothing really to see here. So here we are in Rennes le Chateau, where the, uh, the priest Béranger Saunière, at the end of the 19th century, um, um, uh, had this constructed here, and the whole thing here, the, uh, the church as well behind here. And this guy suddenly had a lot of money. Later on, in the 30s, he died in 1917. It took him 20 years to build all this. And uh, later on, the SS under uh, m m even Mr. Himmler and Otto Rahn, who was the, the famous uh, the symbol of the uh, Indiana Jones movies, or the character of the Indiana Jones movies, they dug here for Templars' treasures. So I told you, it's the Nazi Templars. The Nazis were the Templars. And here it says SS or Isis. Yeah. So here's the castle at Rennes-le-Château. Rennes-le-Château. Skull and bones. So here actually the only thing that's sort of what I find interesting is the falcon here. I think it's a falcon. So that's Horus, the falcon god. 
on the ball which is the earth dom the domination of the earth and this is the idea which is dominating the earth I suppose it's a falcon so Rennes le Chateau Petra, come. Let's hope it comes back again this way. Yeah, look at the red. No, it's too far away. Four is nice. Yeah, it's a shame it wouldn't turn around and come back. Just like the wolf, what's happening, eh? It's because we were talking about the wolf. Rennes le Chateau. It's very cold there. Especially it's always windy. Windy and below zero. The castle of Puy Vert, taken 1210 by the Crusaders under Simon de Montfort. So there were not only Crusades against Jerusalem and Egypt, but also here in the south of France. Hey, we, oui. hey. Well, what do you say? That's one hell of a castle, isn't it? This is Carcassonne. So this is the Qatar region. I'm going to do some more tomorrow when it's light. So here's the medieval bridge. And here's the castle. It's absolutely magnificent. You see how it's big. Absolutely magnificent. So I'm going there tomorrow. But I, I, I don't think I'm going to find any things that's interesting. Uh, this is not the, uh, the goal of my, uh, of the travels, or why I'm here. So, but it's very interesting. So, so this castle here in Carcassonne was taken in 1209 by uh, Simon de Montfort, Simon of the Strong Mountains because the lord of this castle, his name was Raymond Trancavel, he defended the Cathar people and the, uh, the strong mountains, so that's Octagon, Switzerland, they wanted to destroy all the Cathars as they financed Hitler and wanted to destroy all the, all the Jews and they wanted to destroy all the gypsies by sterilizing them. That's the strong mountain, Simon de Montfort, a real bad character. Carcassonne, la cité. So here's the Middle Age Bridge of the castle. So the castle of Carcassonne, here we are again during the day. It's 
see. It's amazing. So I was sleeping rough just next to it. In the south of France here, Carcassonne. Okay, the castle. It's amazing. Kiribus. Kiribus. Perpetus. So I'm inside the castle of Kiribus, which is forbidden in, in fact, but well, everything is forbidden, eh? Uh, so I'm going to crash here. And it was actually here in 1998 where I got the name Gyure, believe it or not. Let's see what's inside the medieval castle in the night <clears throat> see where I can find a good place to crash Got my 25 or 30 kilos on my uh, on my back. Mediterranean. That's the Mediterranean there, that should be uh, Perpignan. Oh, what a door. Well, so I still haven't find, found a place yet. Well, let's go down again. So, oh, well, which way shall I go now? So I'm going to go down here. That's where they used to shoot from, eh? Mm. It's dark now, as you can see. Mm. It's 
So this is in Kirigu, so I'm going down here. So it's hard to get through here with my pack, so I'll just leave it for a while. Leading nowhere. Oh god, go up again. Castle in the night, that's fantastic. So I'm trying to get back. I don't know where I am anymore. I haven't eaten anything today, so I'm a bit slowly, a bit slow. And yesterday I only ate a little bit of bread. Not the, you know, so. I hope I find something tomorrow. Okay, it's sort of slow. You know. well, let's see if I can pass here. Hmm. Well, this was the stair up. I'm not going there anymore. It doesn't stop turning. Right, where am I now? Dungeon, whatever. Oh, I'm going to crash. I'm tired. Uh, I think upstairs. Where's my apartment? <clears throat> Medieval stairs again. Oh, that makes me dizzy. It's quite narrow. Well, what's up there? Isn't it nice? So I think I'm gonna crash up there. It looks nice. So it's here inside the castle where I'm going to crash. It's my double sleeping bag. Yeah. So this is where I slept in the castle of Kiribus. It's amazing how they uh, Constructed this like more than a thousand years ago. It's amazing. They even use concrete. So, this is my view here. Uh, squatting a castle, eh? Nice view from the castle. So, 
I have to get out here now before it uh, before it opens up here. So we're here on top of the Kiribus Castle. There's the Mediterranean, the sea. You see there. And uh, well, this is the panorama all around here. The Pyrenees Mountains. Okay. So this is the castle where I slept, Kiribus, and I slept next to it also in 1998. Uh, Kiribus fell, uh, it was in fact not Montségur, but it was here in 1255, the very last of the Cathar. It almost sounds like Khazar. Ka, of course, it means the soul. As in a religion, the soul is very important in Pharaonic language and Demotic. And we have to know that the Inquisition is, uh, is a Swiss invention. It was two Swiss, Heinrich Kramer and Jakob Springer, who wrote the, uh, the Witch's Hammer, the Maleus Maleficarum. Uh, the Swiss always, Octagon and the, uh, the Empire of Evil, always got their fingers in it somehow, anyhow, you know. They always have, believe me. And before, it belonged to the Kingdom of Aragon. You can hear, it's very pharaonic. And, uh, well, then we had the Inquisition and the Knights. Now we have Guantanamo and the worldwide Octagon Blue Army. And uh, so the Cathars, they were Gnostic people. They wanted to be, uh, go back to the, um, to the origins of, the, um, of Christianity. Uh, which were perverted by the Catholic Church already. Well, anyway, I mean, why we Europeans, we fight these, uh, these wars about a religion which is not even ours, it's from the Middle East. It's thousands of miles away. It has nothing to do with Europe or the Europeans. So why do we fight their wars? Gary Bush. Caribus. The sign of the Templars, there it is, the V, or upside down sometimes as here. And the two lions, which are not domestic animals. Castle of Villerouge Terminal. Here they burned also the Cathars, the Pharaohs did, and the Templars. Simon de Montfort, that's the strong mountains, that's Switzerland. They did it. Chateau Villerouge Terminus. Here too, they, uh, Simon de Montfort and the others, they butchered all the Cathars. Uh, here, I think here the last ones of the Cathars were murdered. They just burned them, everyone, and destroyed the whole region. Chateau Beauregard. This must be a very old one here, uh, with an octagon, there it is, uh, castle stuff and all that. And I'm going to walk up here, all the way up here to the castle here, there. And the castle is even higher up here. So even in the Middle Ages they had these things, right? Eh?
Oktogon. Obelisk. So this is the castle at Morna, at Mornas. Down there is the motorway station where I'm going to hitchhike to the uh, uh, the uh, the big pyramid. So here's the uh, the 10th century castle, <clears throat> and there's the uh, the motorway petrol station on the on the motorway going south to the pyramid. So there's my motorway. And uh, there's the Mediterranean somewhere over the hill. Uh, your knight in shining cars, oh, the Messi Capaches, <laughs> in shining armor. Oh, sorry. So it's the French motorway. Yeah. So this is how the pharaohs started off. They built a, uh, a strong, a strong castle first, a stronghold, and then they, um, then they built the uh, the obelisk down there, so the other ones could see. Well, they're already here, and then they got, you know, they it went more, it got more and more and more and more and more, and now they own the whole world. Here in Carcassonne, I suppose this is a real copy of um, Middle Age uh, stuff here. And uh, uh, what will we see here? There he is, the lizard. Oh, look at the lizard. They have dead lizard, lizards in the Middle Ages. What is this? There's another one in blue. What is this? Well, it's raining, so I can't stand in front of it. Wow, look at that. Lizards. More lizards. And here's one. Yeah. Lizards. Oh, well, that's horrible, isn't it? So, apparently this chair in stone it's uh, 5000 years old and they call it the uh, the devil's chair it's in rennes les bains in the south of france or they also call it isis chair well that makes sense because seth or set on he talked with isis and said well kill your husband and i'll make you the queen of everything and you can raise your children like sheep who obey and who don't think anymore horus that's why horus or jesus he's tied up on a uh, on a cross. Now well, here it is. The devil's chair and the Swiss cross of Octogon. That makes sense, eh? The Isis chair like in the forest. Well it is. I'm standing here because it's like raining. And there we go. So why not a wolf? Why not a bear in Europe? There never were any lions. So there. For all the Europeans who died, they have to put a lion there. And a lion is the symbol of the pharaonic royal dignity. Yeah, you get it. So this is this is what it died for. The obelisk in the octagon. 
in France, in Altskirch. Well, this is uh, this is Swiss actually, Sun Euroglyph. Well, this part, this Alsatian part of uh, France, is actually after the uh, during the Thirty Year War in the uh, 17th century. It was occupied by the Swiss, and they murdered all the uh, all the people in here. So, Octagon, Switzerland, the Sun Hieroglyph, and another one. And guess what they put here? Whoa! This is where they live. They are here. There's no doubt in France. Well, this is not France, this is Switzerland. They murdered all the people of Alsace in the 30-year war and then replaced them with Swiss. Veronica. I don't know where that is, but there's one obelisk here. And there is another one here. Another Pharaonic hotel where they got the joining in front of every window here. There it is. Everywhere. So this is the type of hotels they have here. Look at her. Eyes is, you know. Uh, it looks like a <laughs> yeah, well. Look at it. It's a casino in the hotel. Well, it's like a pharaonic palace. No wonder there's a pyramid up there. There, the Royal. Fuck. Oh, pharaohs all over. Look at this. Look at this one here. All oh, pharaohs. No wonder they got the pyramid there. So here we got the Sun Hieroglyph in Nice and another one. This is Nice. Oh, just look at the temple. So this is Sar. Ah, Sar. It means the queen and Ah pregnant, the queen mother of the pharaohs. Jeweler shop with the pyramid. Oh, what do you think? And the snake. This is Isis. Well, it's a pity I can't go into the park. Looks interesting. This is a real nice valley here. Very nice. Like it here. People from people from all over. So here's the mountain of Bugarash. Uh, they were waiting for the end of the world on, uh, I don't know, the, uh, uh, that the uh, December the 31st, nothing happened apparently, here in the south of France. So I would love to see one, uh, a UFO one or, one or two, that would be nice, but there won't be anything. Um, Bugarash. Just click on pause if you want to read that. Just click pause to read that.
So I slept here next to the UFO base. <laughs> so here in 2000, December 2012 there were uh, 230 reporters from all over the world because uh, people spread the, uh, the information that there were UFOs being sighted here. I can guarantee you that none of the French who was here really believed in it. They just wanted to have a mega party, that's all. <laughs> I spoke to some people, but there were some others who took it very serious, the police, and they even forbid anybody to go here. So this much, we are their slaves. We can't even in nature, we can't even have a big party. Everything is forbidden. They were here with many, many police and uh, helicopters and they just dragged everybody away. There's no freedom at all, even if you want to have a big party. So I spent the night here, but nothing really happened. Uh, I opened up my tent on this side to have a look. Every now and then, when I woke up, didn't see anything, no lights, nothing. Just bullocks. This is what's left of the party. <laughs> um, with the turn of the Mayan calendar on the 21st of December, they were um, closing down the region of Bugaraj, which is here down in the Old Valley in the south of France. Um, the Bugaraj has for a long time been a, a central point where they believed that a lot of people would come and the local mayor himself actually brought the Bugaraj to the public eye through the world by saying that they were very worried about the amount of tourists who were going to come. But at the end of the day, there were no tourists, but there were many, many journalists. Um, all of the hotels were full of journalists, and um, from the reports that I heard, they ended up interviewing themselves because there was nobody else there to actually speak to apart from a group of locals who I heard dressed up as extraterrestrials and were running around the village of Bugaraj trying to entertain the journalists. Um, so the hype never worked and what took, on, um, what took place at Bukharaj over those days is only possibly for the mayor and the authorities to know, but I don't think the journalists really had a very interesting time, but I'm sure they enjoyed the mountain and the hospitality of the local people and their own stories. So the people didn't take it serious. There were 230 journalists interviewing themselves and there was the army and the police. So it was only the enemy within who was there and the people didn't, uh, didn't even come and, and, and fall into the trap, <laughs> as you can say that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So everywhere where the pharaohs came, they put their castles first. So they had a stronghold to terrorize the population and to, uh, to dominate them. So this is the uh, Bugaraj, no UFOs. Well, well, an obelisk, well that explains it all. <laughs> so first they invite with their media, pharaonic media, all these people to come here and then they forbid with their octagon blue army all these people to have a party here so they're just playing games with us you know it's a psychological game to see how many people would believe what well and then they uh, draw their conclusions out of it for the next like false flag operation uh, how do people react and how many people, what percentage, Every, everything is being analysed. You know, it's just a game. Well, let's say if you were an, a, uh, an alien and you like to analyse people, how people would react on aliens. 
it would be a very interesting thing to put up a lie like this here. You see? And see how many people are ready to believe uh, in an alien invasion. So this here is also a, uh, a, a game with fear, as they always do it, and to distract our uh, attention from other things which are more important uh, happening in the world. I think that's an eagle flying there. It's a dune eagle. This is an adler. Wow. A couple of eagles. Two of them. I saw three. So this is more important than this uh, the alien lie by the pharaohs. Who probably are from another planet. The hitchhiker of the Pharaoh show. Gyuri. It's January 2013. It's cold, it's late. I'm tired, I'm knackered. I don't know where I'm going to sleep and I'm on my way to film you the um, some pyramids. The first ones when the Pharaohs came here. So I just had a bite here, just sitting in a bus stop, and uh, yeah. So at these moments, it's only experience that can, you know, just keep on walking like on radar. That can save you. So you see, snow. It's cold. Um, so. In winter, it's very important to have one of these inflatable mattresses. I've got inside uh, an, an artificial sleeping bag, and um, outside the uh, the down feathers, so that keeps you really warm in winter. Very cold. So you see, sporting ground that forms an excellent place for a hiker or a revolutionary to put your tent. And just notice how I put it behind the, uh, the publicity shields here. And not on the field itself, but there's always a bit of place uh, next to it, you know. And uh, where the trees are a little bit like. And um, I mean, every town, even the most little towns, they have a sporting ground. Sometimes you have to go over the fence like here. But anyway, there's a place where nobody comes in the night. Never put your tent or sleep in a public park. You will only, only be waking up by queers or by the police. So, it is cold though. See, behind us. Always look for a, uh, a place where they can't really see you. Well, there I am, behind the pyramids. It's all over. Behind the, th the Hotel of the Three Pyramids. <laughs> uh, here you can see, as always, I took the, uh, with my foot, I took the snow away. Because even uh, through the mattress, it melts. Through the uh, isolation mattress. Uh, hi. Hi, guys. Just packing up my gear. Oh, my hands are freezing. Well, okay, if you want to change something in the world and you want to be a YouTube fighter, I have to uh, make a little sacrifice then, eh? It'll warm up later. So I told you, this is where my mattress was, in the tent, and the snow has melted. Can you imagine? 
how much body warmth um, you would have lost, you know, like if you wouldn't have a, uh, a isolation mattress. And even then, well, I wasn't cold, but even now, uh, this is the amount of body uh, warmth I lost in the night. See? So I'm on my way for you to film a, um, a 4,000 year old pyramid in France, which was built by the pharaohs, of course. Um, and where they built their first pyramid in Europe before they uh, went to the strong mountains and founded Octagon. So this is why I slept at the devil's home. Uh, nobody has seen anything at the Hotel of the Three Pyramids. So that's the motorway, I'm near Lyon and I'm heading for the uh, 4,000 year old pyramids in France. Isn't it lovely here? Nice little forest here. Oh, uh, nobody would come here in the night. I still had a donut kebab in me um, in my backpack, which I had in here for two days. I'm eating it cold now. Look delicious <laughs> for breakfast. This is uh, very important to have this um, weather protection around it if it's raining or snowing here as well. You can't travel without it. So I'm 100 k short of uh, of Nice. It's a whole different landscape here. This is what we know of France, which is actually a very tiny part of France. And there's my petrol station, where I'm going to now. So, Another obelisk in the middle of nowhere. I sense this is here. There's my tent, and there's the uh, the motorway where I'm going to. I sense that this is the uh, uh, this is where they landed before they founded Switzerland and their their real strong mountains, their base. But there will be a massive concentration of pharaonic blood here I'll have a look well anyway I'm gonna videotape the uh, 4,000 year old pyramid it's from the last hitchhiker that was here uh, there's the obelisk and I think there's something up the mountain here so this is a sign to uh, to show what's here I'm gonna have a look for you so the wind you hear is uh, the famous French Mistral, uh, but I found a good place. It's all going overhead, over the top here. No wind here, absolutely no. Uh, so down there is Nice somewhere, Nizza. And uh, so I was trying, after five days of hitchhiking and a lot of walking, I tried to find the pyramid in the night, but I didn't find it. So that's me. I'm near to the pyramid now. So I walked the whole way to the pyramid from Nice and then from the pyramid and all the way out of Nice. So I'm out of Nice here, well, I hope. So there's the airport in Nice. I'm in the middle of a lot of motorways here. It's about everything that makes noise that I'm in the middle here and there's a train passing by every I don't know what nice tree though so there's the petrol station I'm going to uh, last night I was uh, hitchhiking with a uh, with a Bulgarian truck driver the whole night until three o'clock in the morning when I went to sleep it was four o'clock 
So I'm going to see the Qatars for you. So I'm glad to be uh, away from Nice. So here it's better to plant the tents and all that and sleep. In Nice there was no place. They're all living on each other there. There's no place. So these are my tent poles. They get wet so you don't want to have them inside with your dust bag, your sleeping bag. Always put them at the outside and don't put them together in one compartment with your tent and all that. Because while moving it'll make holes like this. This is sharp. It makes, it makes holes in your tent. It happened to me. It's just experience. And there's the tent. I'm just going to put it together. So for a warrior, it's very important to have a good night's sleep, uh, otherwise you're worth nothing. It's more important than eating. And anyway, the society is so rich that there are, and there's su such an abundance on food that there's enough crumbs falling off the table to feed yourself. So it's very important to have all the little items, like here's my toothbrush and all that, that goes in this little pouch here. Which goes again in the compartment like here. And otherwise you, you're crazy like looking for things. And here I sew these little pouches on it, for my Bergen, like the nail clipper, some batteries. So uh, it's easy to find, and in here I've got my uh, ray electric razor. So um, otherwise you're just crazy looking for things. So every item should be at its place, and inside like a little pouch like this, or like this. And I've got many others. And uh, yeah, so here's my isolation mattress outside. And there I've got my tent poles in here outside. My pegs are in here and they go in there. My water bottle outside of course because you don't want it to open uh, accidentally. Yeah. So that's about traveling. My uh, this is the getaway gear. Uh, Yeah, and then I've got the big pack at the back and this little pack in front where I have an easy grip on the uh, on my camera inside. Yeah, I've got a spoon in here, yeah, I've got an extra torch in here, I've got, there's my, uh, my shades. A little pouch here at the side, I've got my maps inside. Here I've got my, uh, my headlamp. So I've got my headlamp for long duration and then I've got a little strong torch for just to have a quick look. And uh, another pouch with uh, batteries and things like that. So, and it's, uh, so the weight isn't that much anymore because the weight of, the other, of this bag here, it goes on the straps here. So it's... Um, and of course, uh, so, so the weight which is on my shoulders, it's, it's not hurting that much. And uh, it, it shifts the weight a bit to the front with some weight here in the little bag. Yeah, yeah. so this is traveling, you have to be organized. Then I've got sewn on my jacket this little lamp here, so if I'm hitchhiking people can see me and it's less dangerous. And I've got another, another one there for a quick quick grip see so mothers make warriors out of your sons so the pharaohs can't snatch them and to make soldiers out of them and to use them against yourselves so here in Carcassonne that's where I'm sleeping and there is the castle behind the trees here, very nice.
So here's a castle in Carcassonne. It's winter time, so there's not many tourists. Here's a lovely park here next to it. And especially in the night or in the evening, I was here last night, it's completely deserted. And look how nice it looks to put your tent. It's dark and you think, well, nobody's going to pass until the morning. But at least two or three times in the night, the secure, security guy will pass by and will tell you to pick up your tent and take all your stuff. I didn't even try it because I know these things. Or some crazy people come and sit here and um, use drugs, you know, or um, do other things or queers. So if you want to find a good place, you have to really go outside where people can have an access to, where people walk, places where people, where a lot of people walk in the daytime and you think it's deserted in the night. These, these are not good places. Good places are places that are deserted during the daytime as well. So, and where no cars have an access to. If there's a parking lot next to it, don't do it. As there's a parking lot here. Uh, because uh, there are queer coming in the night, queers coming in the night, all sort of things like that. So you have to find a place where the cars don't pass. Or, yeah. Okay, it was just a little information for the ones, for the YouTubers who would like to go and uh, see each other. Or if you think this is a great place to put your tent because it's dark in the night and deserted, there's nobody there, well don't do it. Uh, in the day it's full of people as you can see here. And there's the parking lot which is over there. So, that's not very good. This is where I slept. And here is uh, Montségur. It's bloody cold here. South of France. A lot of snow. A little mattress like this, like foam, it's very important. Like if you're traveling winter as I do, you want to sit down sometimes and otherwise you can't sit in the snow, you know, it, uh, it gets cold and it melts. There's the castle. A burrage. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't I put my tent like here? Well, because here's a fireplace and people might come like in the night and all the sparks will co would come on my tent while the wind is coming from the left side. So I'll put it like there. I don't think there will be anybody coming here. It is a Wednesday. If it would be a Saturday, there would be more chance. And it is winter. If it would be like summertime, there would be even more chance. But still, I don't want to take the risk, you know, I, want to, I don't want to take my tent away, you know, like in the middle of the night. So I put it quietly there and I just, so here they saw the UFOs here. So I'm just going to sit here for a while, put on my jacket. These are important things if you're traveling, you know, uh, anticipate the behavior of others. The road to the pyramids, February 2013 in Germany I call it Germany so my water has turned to ice ice in it well And there's the petrol station. I can't see the screen. And there's the petrol station. So, here's the motorway. Now these sort of things a traveller never leaves behind. He folds it up, puts it in his trousers, 
and throws it away later on in a garbage can. Like this, because we respect the nature. Now I can put it on my in my pocket. February uh, 2013. February 2013, on the way back, uh, you see, always hide. This is in Switzerland, especially in this sort of countries, due to the evil character of the people here. They always uh, try to harm you in this country, the Swiss do. They come with the police, they call the police and try to fine you, try to put you in prison. Uh, yeah, it's always hide. So I'm here behind the wall, you see? So, I couldn't stay it all day, but at least I can sleep like until noon. Now, which one of those is going to take me? 